still on the Thames. To the right of the island is King's Lock, to the left it takes us to the Weir and the Wolvercote Mill Stream, a backwater of the river. From there we'll access Duke's Cut. We'll come across some speeding numpties and probably the worst lock on the entire UK network. But it's another glorious summer's day, so stay with us for the cruise. Wolvercut Mill Stream veers to port, whereas the starboard turn would take us to the weir which bypasses King's Lock. My eldest son was helming when these loonies came around the bend at speed. He had to put Reverie into hard reverse to avoid a collision. This, of course, caused our stern to slew around, which completely ruined the line we had for taking the corner. I had to take over, narrowly avoiding this boat, but also trying to prevent our stern damaging the dinghies. In the end, I had to reverse a fair distance to give us a line to take the corner. I'm sorry, but I think this was completely irresponsible boating by idiots who were obviously oblivious to the consequences of their lunacy. OK, rant over. Let's get back to some peace and tranquillity. I'd seen Duke's Cut on maps, I'd cruised past it on the Oxford Canal and was curious by this 500 yard canal with an intriguing name. In the late 18th century the land was owned by George Spencer, the fourth Duke of Marlborough. The Duke owned Wolvercut Paper Mill, which was powered by coal brought in from the Northumberland coal fields. It was loaded on ships in Newcastle, sent to London and then loaded onto barges for the trip up the Thames to Oxford, a journey of approximately 650 miles. When the Oxford Canal was being cut, the Duke decided it would be better business to bring coal from the Warwickshire coal fields to his mill by canal and so instructed the digging of this short connection to the Thames by utilising Wolvercote Mill Stream. The only snag for getting coal to the mill from Duke's Cut was there was no connecting towpath over the mill stream, so horses were unhitched at the stream and taken back to the stabling at Wolvercote Junction. Meanwhile, the coal barges were poled across the river to the mill. This connection was dug in 1789 and the entire length of the Oxford Canal opened in 1790. The second connection between the canal and the river was added at Sheepwash via Isis Lock in 1796. Duke's Cut essentially bypasses the three miles of urban canal through Oxford, making it easier and quicker for anyone wanting to access the south or the west to Lechlade by boat.
Wolvercote Mill Stream continues ahead and we turn to port to enter Duke's Cut proper. As we get closer to the Oxford Canal, we begin to see a greater number of liverboards hugging the towpath. The proximity of the busy A40 does intrude on the rural tranquillity a little. That said, it is quite a pretty stretch of water. Just off to the right of the canal here is Duke's Lake, one of four reservoirs in the vicinity. Under the relatively new bridge which carries the busy A40 Northern Bypass, and you can just see the railway bridge running above Duke's Lock. This was completed in 1852 to join Oxford and Birmingham via rail. Approaching Duke's Lock, number 44B now. Duke's Lock 44A is actually on the Oxford Canal just to the left at Wolvercote Junction. My lad expertly takes Reverie into the lock. Duke's Lock is a mere 5 foot 4 drop, so hopefully we'll be through in no time and heading into Oxford. Think again. This paddle was broken and the water trickled out while it gushed in from the top gate, so it was a case of waiting and waiting. Also, we noticed that the paddle gear on the top gate wouldn't stay open unless you stood there holding it open with your windlass. Begs the question, is this possibly the worst maintained lock on the system? Let me know in the comments if you found worse.
Finally free of the lock, you can see the lock keeper's cottage on the left, and the red brick building was the stabling block. We hook a righty and travel the three miles into Oxford so my boy can get the train back to London. Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button and all that malarkey, and hopefully, we'll see you next time.